Hi again and welcome back to the series of videos A Beginner's Guide to Music Direction in Musical Theatre. Now throughout this series I have covered what I think are all aspects relating to music direction in musical theatre. We've looked at roles and responsibilities, basic conducting technique, arranging your band, choosing your band, leading singing rehearsals, running additions, the technical and dress rehearsals, plus I've added one or two videos where I have deviated away from music direction and have received some abuse. This video, for instance. Now, I'm very aware that those people that disagree are those people that are likely to be more vocal when it comes to criticism. It just seems that some people can't seem to tolerate others with opinions. Anyway, moving on. If you haven't done so already, please do subscribe by hitting the button below where you can be informed when further videos are released. Also, please continue to ask me any questions in the comments box and let me know if there are any other subjects you would like me to cover. Something that is becoming more and more popular in recent times, no doubt due to the huge advancement in technology, is that more and more of us, both in amateur and professional settings, are using what's sometimes known as click tracks to supplement the band or orchestra and to give that extra fullness in the sound. Yeah, and because we can't all afford a full contingent of musicians, unfortunately. If you're new to using tracks and how they work, or if you haven't done so already, do take a look at this video, which goes into detail on how to put a simple track together and how to create a relatively simple setup for for using tracks with your band. Now, it seems I'm becoming more and more of a Facebook user, something that until starting this channel, I wasn't too much of a fan of, if I'm honest. However, theatre groups, music groups, orchestration and music direction groups on Facebook are a huge source of information. And if you haven't done so already, I would urge you to join such groups. Sometimes by messaging other music directors that maybe have done a certain musical you're about to embark upon can help enormously in all sorts of ways. A question I saw on a music director's Facebook group a few weeks ago was asking how one would go about dealing with vamps when using click tracks. Now, I have used tracks for a number of years now and in various settings and thought it would be useful for some to put together a video explaining the best ways to handle vamps in our music scores when using tracks. So then, what is a vamp, I hear you ask? Well, according to my Penguin Dictionary of Music, a vamp is to improvise an instrumental accompaniment or introduction to a song. Well, not exactly in the context we're looking for. Other dictionaries would state that it's an improvised repeated passage of music, which is a little bit nearer the mark. Then if you put the word vamp into other dictionaries, you'll get something along the lines of a female's prowess over men. But that's another video, one I'm not gonna do. Let's start then by taking a look at a few examples of vamps in this context and how they are indicated in some musical scores. But just before I do that, I wanted to note that while looking for examples, it occurred to me how little they are used in older musical scores. Of course, musicals back in the 19th century of Gilbert and Sullivan consisted of a series of songs with dialogue linking them together to tell a story. It wasn't really until the era of Rodgers and Hammerstein when dialogue became more integrated into the music. However, even if you look at Rodgers and Hammerstein's scores, you'll see that underscore music is frequently written with dialogue above it and therefore to be delivered together and hopefully timed to finish together. In more modern musicals, the writing integrates the story and its dialogue into the musical themes throughout the storytelling and as such has led to many more requirements for the music to be, should we say, more flexible. I've therefore chosen three examples to demonstrate the problems we can incur when using tracks. Now, the first of the three that I've chosen should be well known to the vast majority of you. It is, of course, the opening number to Chicago, All That Jazz. 
and after the fantastic overture um, it then goes into this two bar phrase followed by this two bar vamp now unusually in this instance it indicates that it should be four play three times now it might be the case that the director has added some extra business um, or action on stage that it needs to be five times or six times um, similarly it may be only once required so we can use that um, flexibility to suit whatever is happening on stage before we hit the cue to carry on with Velma's vocal entry come on babe the second example that I have chosen um, is from an even more modern musical, Come From Away. This is the opening number, uh, Welcome to the Rock. And here you'll see that the bodrum drums and it goes round and round and keeps repeating until this cue has been finished. So until, until we hear the cue town called Gander, that's the indication then to carry on. Um, and the, the third and final example that I've chosen, uh, I've chosen particularly because the amount of information that is now available in um, modern uh, piano conductor scores and MD scores. Um, this is from the musical six. It's the opening number um, X Wives. Um, we've got a huge amount of dialogue here while we're, the band is paused. Uh, then on the cue here, we hit the trigger click one, two, three, and the band starts. And then we go round and round this uh, cue until we get the cue we said are you ready and away we go um, we've also got just to highlight we've also got um, a lot of information with regards to what patches are playing at any any one time but those are three examples particularly uh, to show what we're up against when it comes to um, trying to be as flexible as possible when using our tracks Vamps used to cause all sorts of problems when using tracks, but depending on the software you use to play the tracks, these can now easily be overcome. There are three different ways I would normally approach solving this problem. And before going any further, let me discuss with you solution number one. Even though the score may say repeat until Q or vamp until ready, Ask yourself, do you need a continuous looping vamp phrase at all? It's very rare one would come across an instruction to vamp for so long that you wouldn't be able to decide in advance how long any particular vamp would need to play for. What I mean is don't underestimate your performer's ability to deliver dialogue at a consistent pace throughout the rehearsal phase and performance. If you're using tracks, then you're very likely to be using tracks for rehearsals. Any vamps required under dialogue can therefore be measured and practiced, and you'll be surprised at how performers consistently use the same amount of time to deliver the relevant dialogue. You therefore just need to ensure that the vamp plays for that amount of time. As an added level of security, I like to sometimes add a percussive sound like a triangle or a small drum fill for the last or couple of last bars to indicate to the performer that the vamp is about to move on. Try it. You'll be surprised at how effective this method is. Before I move on to how to manage vamps in your tracks, we should look at solution number two, software available through providers of show tracks. There are a couple of well-known companies now that provide tracks nowadays, and personally, I have had experience with using Right On Q services. They have some amazing software to assist rehearsals and will, that will manage vamps, tempo changes, rouse writs, changes of key if required, and on-screen scores. Then a second application to handle the tracks used for the performance. The tracks themselves have improved no end over recent times, but of course there is a cost to using this software and they are usually licensed per production for a certain amount of time up to your performance dates. So then, now I'm going to look in much more detail as to how to manage this vamp issue when playing back any tracks you wish to use in your performances. The software you choose to use for playing the tracks is key to this solution. Now, 
I know many of you may use Apple's main stage. As good as software as this is, and I've used it many times, although I'm no expert in its use, it is great at programming and mixing samples and patches, but its playback function is just that, a device to play back your track. I found it a rather lumpy program, if I'm honest, and not very flexible, a system for playing tracks, and as far as I'm aware, can't handle repeated passages in the way that we would need to as far as vamps are concerned. But then, like I say, I'm not an expert in this and maybe someone can tell me if it can do what we're looking for in this context. What could be called the industry standard for playing music, sound effects and controlling all manner of MIDI and lighting setups within theatres today is QLab. If you're using multiple tracks in your performance, then this is the software I would highly recommend. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I control my tracks and including vamps using QLab. Now, I don't profess to be an expert in its use and there are quite a few YouTube videos online to help you learn more about how this software works. So do take a look at them if you want to know more than what I'm going to cover here. Oh, and it's added benefit, it's free. Let's take a look. So then this is the website for uh, QLab. Like I say, it is a free version uh, that you're able to download and use. One or two restrictions, which we'll come to later. Um, I should also point out at this point as well that it is for Mac users only. Sorry for Windows users, you've lost out again, unfortunately. So it's Mac users only. Um, you would click on the download button and then download like you would any other application on a Mac. Um, when I say um, it's free, it is free and we can use it and what I'm about to demonstrate to you, um, we can use it for free. Um, we do have, however, um, a paid for version and I thought it would be worth just explaining a little bit about this. First of all, to buy a standard license for the latest version is $999. <laughs> How much? Yeah, we don't need to pay that, don't worry. Um, it is divided into three sections, however. Um, an audio section, a, a video section, and a lighting section. We don't need lighting and we don't need video. So if you wanted to buy it as a standalone and get all the full features, it would be down to $399. But if that's too expensive, we could actually, rather than buy it, we could actually rent it and you would put your dates into there and it would come up with um, a fee to rent it, um, which works out round about uh, $4 per unit per day. But like I say, we want the free version. So let's just close that down and let's move on now to when you open it for the first time, this is what you see, um, an empty screen. Um, and in this area, we would list all our cues. Now, in this particular software, a cue could be um, a lighting cue, it could be a video cue. We're only interested in audio cues though. And when it comes to audio cues, it could be play track A or play track B. Um, and what I wanted to demonstrate to you, first of all, is that this operates very differently to any other MP3 or, or music software type player. So um, we have across the top um, various um, um, icons and if you don't know what these icons are I like to show them like that and that's control K. So we can group our cues together we're only really interested in audio cues uh, and then we've got start stop pause reset etc etc. The first thing I wanted to demonstrate was to bring in an audio cue. And I'm going to bring in a, um, a sound effect. Uh, and in this instance, you just drag and drop them in. And this is a sound effect of uh, jungle atmosphere. I'll put headphones on so we can hear this. And by pressing the space bar, we get the jungle atmosphere coming through. And that will play until the track runs out. Let's just stop it for the time being. Um, let's add now a second sound effect. 
And in this instance, the sound effect is going to be, um, let's say, a ship's siren, I think it is. So we, like before, we just drag and drop it in. This is what it sounds like. Yep, OK, you get the idea. Um, we could add in a steam train in this instance. This is what the steam, steam train sounds like. And then the train starts to pull away from the station. Yeah, we'll stop that. There's a, there is the reason I'm, 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 I'm demonstrating it this way. Uh, we've then got a song thrush. Yep, very nice. And finally, we're going to have some... Um, if I can get it to work, we're going to have some applause. Come on, applause. There we go. There we go. Now, we've now got these five sound effects cues, and this is where it differs from um, other players. Because every time you start a cue, the previous one doesn't stop. And that is a concept you need to grasp more than ever. And when you start practicing with this software, you'll see exactly what I mean. And so we'll start off with um, highlighting the first cue, hit the space bar and it will start to play. This is our jungle atmosphere. Um, that will continue to play until I stop it or I put an instruction in the software for it to stop. If I hit uh, the next cued cube, which is the ship's siren, here we go again. It goes over the top. It goes over the top of it. I can then hit it again and we'll have the steam train. And as that steam train pulls out of the station, we hear third song. And these will all continue to play until they run out unless I um, instruct otherwise. And then finally, we've got our applause. Yep, let's stop all those. So that gives you an indication as to how sounds can overlap. Music, we don't want to overlap. Or very rarely would we want it to overlap. And one thing I wanted to point out here, so if we highlight a cue here, we have some availability of different tabs um, at the bottom, um, um, different triggers to, to start the, the, the cue going. Um, we have a, um, let's just play that. We have a sound wave. Um, we can alter various audio levels. Um, and then other bits and pieces that we won't go into it in this particular um, demonstration. So now we're going to look at using this software to handle repeated vamp bars that will go round and round and only continue when we hit the next cue in the list. But before that, let me show you the piece of music I've prepared to demonstrate this. OK, then, so the example I've chosen to demonstrate this, uh, you'll see in front of you now, it's from the musical Something Rotten. Of course, you knew that for those that are observant. Um, now, we have this two bar phrase here, and you may say that those two bars is more than enough to get that three line um, cue in. Um, but as I've mentioned before, perhaps the director um, has put some business in there or wants it three times or four times or five times, whatever. We're going to get it to play round and round in a loop until we cue otherwise. Just so that you've got, I'm just showing you this so you've got a visual representation um, of um, um, what I'm going to demonstrate. Let's just have a listen to that first of all. So once, twice, and then it moves on. OK, so now that we've seen that, let's just close that down and let's go back to our blank screen of um, QLab with no cues in it whatsoever. Um, the icons across the top that we see here, I like to actually know exactly what they are. And by pressing Command K, we get them on in a list 
down the left hand side you can see that there okay now um what we do to start with as we did with the sound effects previously we will bring in our cue uh, there it is just drag and drop it really is as simple as that um, just for the sake of this recording I need to change the output so you'll be able to hear it okay so um, there is our vamp in Q lab demo uh, we can call it whatever we want and um, let, let's assume it's I don't know it might be music number two in our series of um, uh, tracks that we're using for this particular production we'll call it number two and because it's called a musical within something rotten we'll call it a musical just to add another level of complication so that's our track um, if we highlight it and we uh, the tabs at the bottom we press the time and loops we can see we have the waveform along the bottom here. I can just move my picture out of the way. Now it's in this area that we're going to be working more than any other because we need to identify in this waveform where that loop is going to be. Um, let's just play it by using these controls. There we go. And it starts round about there. Wow. get a rough idea where it's going to be. Now we're going to put some markers in this waveform um, and in QLab markers are called slices. So let's just put a slice, I think it's round about there, add a slice and I think it was round about perhaps there, I don't know, we'll add another slice and the more slices we add you'll see that these numbers have started to appear. And basically, if we were to change one of these numbers to, I don't know, three, should we say, and we started that track at the beginning, that slice would actually play three times before moving on. We don't actually want that, but let me just demonstrate that. Let's just finish the track to start with. There we go. Okay. So it plays it once, plays it twice, three times and now it'll move on. But we don't want that, of course. We're gonna set that to play just through once. And this is the vamp area, or we think it is. We'll test it in a, in a moment. We could set that to however many times we wanted to do, but we want it to go round and round. So by pressing a zero in there, it will actually add an, uh, an infinite loop. So now that if we play that little area, it'll go round and round and round. we need to make some adjustments so I'm going to move that slightly I think that's about right isn't it Okay, so that's our vamp. That's our loop, should we say, and it'll go round and round. Now what we do is we need to add a cue to come out of that loop. And that's done by using this function here, the devamp cue. And we'll just drag and drop a devamp cue into our list. And you will notice here there is a red cross and anything in QLab that has a red cross means there is a break somewhere in the link. In other words, this devamp cue doesn't know which track it pertains to. And to enable it to identify which track, all we do is we drag and drop the track itself that it pertains to into that cue. And then it will say devamp music uh, number two in musical. Now we know if we just go back to um, the, the notation, we know that this vamp is here at bar 80. So let's call that particular vamp, we'll just call it bar 80 vamp. Now without changing anything else, 
um, we'll notice just before I do that before anything else um, these settings down here we don't need to change whatsoever it's just going to devamp currently the looping slice um, and then it will move on so if we now start the first cue play as normal up to and there's the loop and that will just keep going round now until I hit the space bar again so we'll hit it now and there it carries on Now you may say, well, that's fine, uh, but we've got more than one vamp in any particular musical number. That's not a problem at all. If we go back now to our waveform here, let's add another um, um, infinite loop and let's put a slice there and another one there. And we'll change that to zero, which is an infinite loop. Now this might not sound too good but let's have a go from the beginning go round and round let's come out of that loop into the next one and now we've got a second loop pause that and so that would be uh, what bar 82 so all we do now is we draw in a second devamp, tell it it still belongs to that particular track by dragging it down. And we can call this bar 82 vamp. Um, and it will know to come out of bar 82 when I hit the space bar. So right, let's go right from the beginning again. That's our first vamp bar. Hit the space bar now. It will carry on. Now we're in the second vamp. And hit space bar again now, and it will carry on again. Now, I said that this is a free um, application, and it is. But this is where we need to exercise a little bit of caution. We would save that in the normal way. So let's call it, I don't know, Rob's demo. Save it onto our desktop, close it down. And there it is in the list. When we now open that up again, we will notice that we have two red crosses here. And at the bottom here, there is a warning on the review the warnings and it will basically say that those two devamps require a license to reactivate that save queue now don't let that be too much of a problem to you because really all it does need is putting those in again so we will delete them and add the devamp queue a second time one to tell it each time it belongs to that queue by dragging it down. The first one was bar 80 vamp. The second one was, I think, bar 82 vamp. And it'll play in exactly the same way. Straight on to the next. And then into the next one, round around the next one, and now out. So don't worry too much about the fact that when you reload, you've got to put all the vamp bars in. I don't think that's a major problem, to be honest. Um, it can take minutes. Obviously, it depends how many vamps you've got in uh, your entire set. Um, but it's well worth that trouble than paying, what was it, $399? Click on the subscribe button below and let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Also, let me know if you want me to look at any other areas in the role of music director. I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.